You may have heard of the movie Unstoppable, where a freight train carrying toxic materials loses its driver and continues barreling down the railroad unattended, and it has to be stopped by catching up to it with another train, and then Denzel Washington and Chris Pine hop aboard and stop it, narrowly avoiding the train's derailment and the spilling of toxic goo onto the general public. Which, based on my interactions with the general public, would have been a much better ending. You may also know that this movie was loosely based on a real event. Well, good for you, you know it all bastard. But forget what you know, because today we're going to watch a real cinematic masterpiece by enjoying a Cukeser video. Like, share, and subscribe. Wink, wink. That's right. Today's video is a telling of the true events of the Crazy Eights incident. On May 15, 2001, a locomotive engineer was switching a string of freight cars between tracks in a railway yard in Toledo, Ohio, behind the wheel of CSX 8888, which is an SD42 locomotive. And I'm sure a small portion of you watching this video are train spotters and could discuss the ins and outs of this train at length, but there's only one type of train spotting I care about, and it's got Ewan McGregor in it, dickhead. As he was carrying out the switching maneuver in the yard, the engineer noticed a switch up ahead was misaligned, and even though the train was moving pretty slowly, he knew the brakes were probably not going to be able to stop it before it rolled over the switch, which I guess would be a ball ache. This engineer had 35 years of locomotive experience under his belt, so being a grizzled veteran, he surely knew what to do. He decided he would step out of the cab, hop off the train, manually realign the switch and then hop back on the still moving train. Actually, that kind of sounds like maybe he didn't know what he was doing. There are a few sets of brakes on trains. The independent brake uses compressed air to apply pressure to a piston, which through some complicated mechanical linkage, applies the brake shoes to the train wheels, which should then slow down due to friction, similar to your car or bicycle brakes. The engineer applied the independent brake. The automatic brake is similar, except instead of only being applied to the locomotive, it applies to every individual freight car, and it acts as an emergency brake being automatically applied under certain conditions. The engineer applied some pressure to the automatic brake. The dynamic brake is quite complicated, but basically it turns the motors powering the wheels into generators. So where once you had electrical energy being converted into mechanical energy to power the motors, now you have mechanical energy being converted into electrical energy, which creates resistance for the rotating shaft. I'm sure somebody can explain this better than me, but once again, there's no sign of Ewan McGregor, so I don't care. Dynamic braking mode needs to be selected, and then the throttle, which normally controls how fast the wheels should spin, now controls how fast the wheels should stop spinning. And this is where the engineer fucked up. The engineer mistakenly did not complete the selection process for dynamic braking, so when he pushed the throttle to max, he thought it was in full brake, but in reality, it was in full throttle. Maybe a slight design flaw to have a system that gives you the exact opposite of what you would normally expect, but I've never driven a train, so maybe it's actually very straightforward and this guy is just a gobshite. So, the engineer hops off the train and flips the switch. When he turns around, he expects to see the train slowly coming to a halt, at which point he will hop back on board. What he actually sees is too cool, motherfucker. He tries to board the train again, but it's too fast now and he falls over as he tries to pull himself up the railing. He's dragged about 80 feet before eventually letting go of the railing. And apart from some minor cuts and bruises, he's uninjured, which is probably the only good thing that happened to him that day. Now CSX 8888 is leaving the yard by itself. Although the brake shoes are applied, it's not enough to stop a train on full throttle. You may have heard of a dead man switch, which is a pedal or handle which must be held down by the operator of the train. In the event of the operator being incapacitated, they would relieve pressure from the switch, which causes the emergency brakes to engage. And you would certainly think that the engineer being on the ground beside the train would count as an incapacitated operator, but applying the brakes had disabled the dead man's switch, so now the train was accelerating down the tracks with no one on board and the brakes being worn out. All we had to do was follow the damn train, CJ! CSX 8888, now known as Crazy Eights, consisted of 47 freight cars, 22 of which were loaded. 
two tank cars were carrying molten phenol, which is... Well, let's just say you shouldn't incorporate it into your skincare routine. The engineer ran to find somebody with a radio, and from here the yardmaster was notified of the runaway train, as well as the train master, the Toledo branch train dispatcher, and the police. Crazy Eights began a wonderful journey south through northwest Ohio, traveling 65 miles, that's 105 kilometers. Some of you have asked why I'm so inconsistent with the units of measurement I choose between videos, and the answer is that the vast majority of my viewership is in the US, so I'm stuck between doing the right thing and doing what the audience will actually understand. Also, being inconsistent maximizes your chances of irritating people, which is very agreeable to me. So how do you stop a runaway train? Well, that's a good question. A few people tried to board the train, but it was going at around 20 miles per hour, so it just wasn't going to happen. And this was in the early stages of the journey. You have to remember, the brake shoes are clamped on the wheels, so that's impeding the acceleration. But the friction slowing down the wheels is also wearing out the brakes. So the longer the train goes on, the more worn the brakes get, and thus the less they hamper the train's throttle. The police were made aware of an emergency fuel cutoff switch on the locomotive. But of course, the train was going too fast to press it. So, they hatched the genius idea of firing at it with a shotgun. No joke. Not really doing much here to help the American cop stereotype. In the academy, they must just give you a problem-solving flowchart where there's only four actions, and three of them say open fire. This may come as a surprise, but shooting the switch did not work. It needs to be held down for several seconds. Even if it didn't, I'm not sure this would have worked, but that's one for Mythbusters, I guess. Speaking of sidetracks, another attempt to stop the train involved putting a portable derailer on the track of a siding, and the switch was remotely operated so Crazy Aids would enter the siding and run over the derail, and, well, you can probably guess what comes next. But Crazy Eights had no intention of being derailed, and it dislodged the derail when it ran into it. By now, the brake shoes were completely worn out, and the train was traveling at 50 miles per hour. Heading in the opposite direction was CSX 8392. The crew of two pulled their train into a siding to let Crazy Eights pass, and then they uncoupled themselves from their freight cars and gave chase. Ooh boy, it's on now. CSX 8392 was eventually able to catch up with Crazy Eights and coupled to its rear. Applying the dynamic brakes of their locomotive, they managed to slow Crazy Eights down, but not stop it. At a crossing just outside Kenton, Ohio, CSX trainmaster John Hosfeld ran alongside Crazy Eights, now traveling at 11 miles per hour, and hopped on board where he shut down the engine. Apart from the brake shoes, the trains received minor damage. No one was hurt, except for the original engineer who was cut up a bit trying to reboard Crazy Eights. Despite being a 35-year veteran with a clean track record, he, he, he was fired from CSX. His identity was never disclosed and we never found out what happened to him afterwards. A little bit like Tankman. The CSX authorities probably did away with him. Several railway museums tried to buy Crazy Eights, but CSX refused to sell it, saying they did not feel it was worthy of preservation, which is the corporate way of saying, no, we don't want our massive blunder to be immortalized in pop culture history, thank you. And sadly, in 2016, Crazy Eights was converted into an SD-43 and given a new roster number, 4389. Shine on, you Crazy Eights. And if you like the story of Crazy Eights, I made a t-shirt memorializing it. You can buy this and all my other great merch over on my merch store. If you want more stories, then subscribe. I also have a second channel, Cukesert2. I have a Twitter account, a subreddit, and a Patreon. The links to all of which are in the video description. Thank you all.